Welcome back everyone to another quarantine. We're in, we're still in, we're still doing it. And it's going to last for quite a while. A lockdown, Carlos. A lockdown, Carlos, from head to toes, thick skin. I might get a, a, a tatty pee. <laughs> a lockdown <laughs> scraper. Oh. We'll just whittle, whittle, whittle it off. Oh, I could, God. I could carve my legs like Scrimshaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Jesus! Out, the sky is filled with seagulls. Now, so just like fuck. You've been saying this about the seagulls. I've been on the seagulls from before this started. But I'm telling you, they're 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 surrounding. I was in uh, Nepal. I was walking towards the monkey temple, and it is as amazing as it sounds. And above it, there's eagles circling. It's just incredible. And now I'm looking down at the multis at the the bottom of Loch Hee, and all the seagulls are circling. It's not any different. Is, is it like sky burials? Yes. <laughs> That's what's on top of the but on top of the multis. <laughs> oh Jesus! If you did, if you fell down in the street, they would be right upon you, like. Oh, no hesitation at all. They'd just be munching away on you. It's many many years ago. I think I've been. Shetland on a family holiday and we got lost on the moors. Oh god. And we were lost for hours, just hours and hours. <laughs> but there's things called the a skewers. Mm-hmm. A earth thing, and they're called bonksies up there. They're like a gigantic brown seagull. They're, 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 they're vicious. Oh god. And they're called bonksies because they fly down and bonk you on the head. Oh. So I might picture the family lost in the mist, like it's like a, like someone who shared a lot of homes. Okay. <laughs> stumbling, stumbling on the heat and falling down fucking mud holes and tripping on peat and all this kind of stuff. And then these big brown gulls are swooping out of the mist and banging you in the heat. It sounds like uh, a special holiday. Well, as far as family holidays go with my family, that was one of the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Me and my brother would give a holiday money. Hey, on day one, here's your holiday money, and it wasn't a lot, as you can imagine, this was the 80s. Okay. And then you'd be told, now if you spend that, you're not getting any more. Mm-hmm. So you'd, you'd, you'd invariably come back from your holiday with the money. That's that's so exactly what I did, going, that's oh, right, yeah. Going, oh no, what am I going to do? Oh, oh god, there's a G.I. Joe figure. Can we use yeah. a He-Man? Oh, Skeletor. But you're oh, too scared. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was grim, wasn't it? Grim. It was grim. grim times, grim times. Have you been on a family caravan holiday? The only holidays we ever had was a, was a week, because my mum and dad, they had a friend who had a caravan in Arbroath. Oh, so we went 20 miles away from Dundee, and uh-huh. uh, it was at the Elliot, the first caravan site you, you get to as you come into Arbroath, and it was yeah. wonderful. I had the best time. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, it was that great. Caravan smell. Yes. It doesn't matter what you do to a caravan, they always smell exactly the same. It's got this, it it, there's an atmosphere. Fusty smell. Yes, it? there's a, a dampness. <laughs> Me and my brother and my mother and father are all in this wee caravan. Mm-hmm. And I've got, I'm, I'm, I like the breakfast in the morning. You enjoy it. Can those multi packs of Kellogg you get? That's exactly what we, they were special. You only got oh, them in the caravan. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. only got them for caravan holidays. But I've got, I can remember, we ended up with this tiny little black and white television, and I remember lying in the sleeping bag, and all four of us were watching The Marathon Man. Oh, there's a, <laughs> there's a film to watch, a <laughs> family get together. Is it safe? Is it safe? With the sound of the drill. Oh out. my word. Right. Scottish family holidays, Jesus Christ. The, it, looking back on it, it was such a small thing but my dad used to um what he would do instead of just driving straight to our broth he would take us on the most roundabout drive to make it feel like we're far away oh that's brilliant yeah. <laughs> i heard of people that went on the skin pensioners your faculties go so you're happy with very little as a pensioner that's true uh, the, i knew people that were in a hotel was it somewhere in ayrshire or something and they, each day they would get in a bus journey, and when they came back to the hotel, it was a different theme. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so there'd be Italian flags up, and that night they'd be having spaghetti. And then the following night, <laughs> they would drive away, come back, German flag, again, German beer, and they went to Germans eat. A sausage. Drive, you know what I mean? Yeah. Crowd, again, a week of that. Oh, God. I've never been on a Butlins holiday, but can I must keep Oh, no. No, hold on. I have been on a Butlins holiday. Oh, no. My Don't auntie, my auntie, uh, uh-huh. um, she took her daughter and me, uh-huh. my cousin, uh-huh. Cheryl, yeah. and we went, you figure it out, yeah, and we, yeah. we went to air oh. and... We went into the 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 cell that you live in, and I remember going into bed that night, and there was bunk beds, and I was on the top one, and I rolled over, and my forehead touched the wall and cut me badly, because there was harling on the inside. Oh my god! Because <laughs> Billy Billy Butlin was a he was a he was in a he was in a knife gang and stuff. He was this tough looking little bastard. Right. Car. Oh my he god. He had a right coarse look to him. But he, he, he basically, it was military camps. Oh, it was, yeah. He bought, he bought them surplus after the Second World War, so he just, he didn't do much to them. Can I think he slept on the, the military beds. I think he put some kind of wallpaper in, perhaps. Oh, the, very thought of it. I never saw any wallpaper. It was it Harlan, was and if you were lucky, oh. the Harlan had been painted, but in my room it hasn't. So it was like oh. white crystalline st- it was like quartz and I oh, and I hit my head I went ah oh, I hurt my head and when I woke up in the morning there was blood all over the pillow because it had been ble- I didn't realise it had been bleeding what, what was that wallpaper that in the 80s it had flecks or like wood in it wood chip wood, wood chip, chip. It's the, wood chip is would provide two things a tremendous no 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 a tremendous stress relief by picking all the wood chip out and the greatest pain you'll ever have when when that wood oh. chip would slide under your nail. Under your nail. Oh. Do they still make those? Yeah, you still get wood chip. I suppose it was designed for to, to hide blemishes. Yeah, because it's, it's like blown yeah. vinyl throws your eye off any like kind of chunky. Plastic exactly. Plastic. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's that's the point of it. But I despise the job. Like we. Like I've just I've not I've never hung wallpaper in my life because I find it the most pointless exercise ever. Okay. I mean, I'd, I'd paint the wall. I don't mind painting the wall, but the thought of pe- and my mum and dad. I remember they bought a house and you just you'd get the steamer going. Yeah. And the whole room would be like it was like some bit of tenko, and then you would be slowly peeling like twenty five layers of a wallpaper off the walls. Yeah. But the wallpaper paste. I just do you like DIY decorating like that? Hate it. Hate it. Is it a Dido? Dido? A Dido? A Dido rail? Yeah. Oh, Dido? 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 Oh, one of them. They don't do Dido, do they? No, I'm Rail. Yeah. Oh, awful. There's the more middle class option. All right. Centre parks. Oh, no, no. That's that's for the rich. But that has something of the cult about it. It's like there's no cars on the centre park reservation. And I, I don't really think you're encouraged to drink because it's like a family place. Oh, no. It seems terrible. What's that place you go abroad and it's like, for, for, it's for, it's childless. You're not allowed children at it. They're not called Sandals Resort or something. Oh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They offer those right. options where there are no children. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Fair enough. <laughs> I don't think it's like a sex thing. It's just. It's what they say. It, yeah, they always kind of say that. I always say it's not you sex, know? but it is. It's, it's a I meat market. It's like a, a, maybe a nudist resort. Ugh. Oh. I've told this before, but nudists play a variant of tennis where they have like a wooden box that slides over their arm like a gauntlet. What? It's unique to nudism. I've never heard of this. Yeah, look it up. It's a nude. It's like a, it's like a, a yeah. A, yeah. Why can't they just? Uh, what, what are they offended I, by rackets or something? I, I don't know what it's about, but they invented it because nudism's been going around for a long time. It's mm. quite fascistic, though nudism. Yes, yes. A, I believe there's some places you go, you have to have no body hair. Oh wow. Yeah, I saw it on TV, and it's like, what's that to do with anything? That's to do with someone's particular taste. 
Of course it is. Always is a hit. Always is. Ugh. No, I like to. I like clothes on. If I could get away with it, I'd wear clothes in the bath. I like clothes. You like to. I'm a fan of clothes. But they say a nudist colony. The whole point of it is you're supposed to be nude, so everyone's nude and everyone's equal. But the thing is, you can get away with it because people wear fancy watches. Oh, there's all. There's always going to be that though. That's just the way of it. That's the. There's, isn't there, there's that's the human there's nature. A guy, there's yeah. A guy that spoils something for everybody else. That's it. Usually you. I just don't want to be a barbecue with somebody's oh, Jesus, it's it can't be health sanitary. It's not. No, a, no, I, know, I know they say oh, it's only the human body. There's nothing wrong with the human body, and I agree. But at the same time. Neanderthal men didn't go about with their cocks out. This is it. They had a they gourd. They put something on. They had a, a like gourd a... fashioned out of a horn. Yeah, they did. have you seen those guys that wrap, like, wrap their cocks in like a kind of leaf? Yes. But then a lot of them like to tuck their balls up into their body cavity. That's a thing with a lot of these people. Oh. But they... <laughs> <laughs> See humans, I'm had enough of them. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. The Amazon rainforest. Okay. There was a t- one of the last tribes that had, had no contact with humanity. Right. We modern humanity. Okay. And they, there was people going about, and, and you know how you, there was some film crew going about, and out of the jungle came these little people, and they were naked. Okay. They were naked, and they were, they had the little kind of bull haircuts and all this kind of stuff, and they were fascinated. Kind of, and we've spoken about this before, but humans get all, they can they exchange smiles and they kind of go yeah. to each other. Yeah. But the first thing these people wanted to do was put on, like, Coca-Cola t-shirts. Wonderful. They really wanted clothes. They immediately felt, it's fucking ridiculous that we have no the clothes on. It's a it's funny a, thing. It's a strange thing. It was, did I tell you the story about, uh, I knew this doctor, and he was going out um, to to help some village in, in, in the Amazon, and he says it was, like, five days of travelling by boat. They really got into the middle in no way, he says. It was it's unbelievable. Down, yeah, stuff. really yeah. incredible. They've been travelling, never seen anyone. It's just, it's the strangest experience, he said. And then one day, they turn a little corner, uh-huh. and there's a tiny little wonky jetty. And on the jetty, there's a sign, uh-huh. Iron Brew. <laughs> 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 he says a rusty old Iron Brew sign and nothing oh, else. Dude, Just well, nothing. The thing is, Iron Brew, you can buy guns <laughs> in North America, but you can't buy Iron Brew. It's got some ingredient in it that's illegal across. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like that. You can get a, an AR-15, yeah. but fuck, watch yeah. out for those Kinder Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Brew's probably killed more people than bloody weapons. I anyway. could believe that, yeah. I could. Isn't it? No, do you remember a thing? It was Esther Ranson's husband, Desmond something. Yeah. And it was the boy David. Remember that for the Yes. And it was a Scottish surgeon. He'd went into the rainforest and he it was a kid who'd had some like flesh eating disease in front That's of him. right. He had no nose or upper him. Yeah. I wonder mm-hmm. where that kid is now. Remember they used to I think, follow after him? Yeah, the surgery was incredibly successful, yeah, I think, yeah. Stuff. It was they great. They rebuilt his face. But I remember watching it, and this is a child who'd been having surgery upon surgery upon surgery. Mm-hmm. But because he had, like, native a South American Indian DNA, he was a dead, powerful wee guy, but mm-hmm. really, really small. And they they, 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 they they lived in, like, a, some some kind of wealthy a North American city. Right. And it, it, at the school, these big corn-fed Americans were just towering over him. So they actually broke his legs to give him extra height. And I what? remember at the time thinking, all these surgeries, why would you do such an unnecessary piece of surgery? That, I found it really strange. That's shocking. It was strange, yeah. Really, Jesus. Really strange. Yeah. Oh, my but God. I don't know how that guy goes. There's a lot of these kind of programs, the show, and it's like they go back and follow up after. Yeah, you'd after love to. Uh, we're going to have to look after this is over. I'm going to look on the computer, Izer, and I'm going uh-huh. to check it out to see where that dude is now yeah. with these extra long legs. Yeah, with his extra long legs. <laughs> <laughs> but his dad was kind of remarkable. Kind of, plastic surgery gets a really bad reputation because mm-hmm. it's like tits and nose jobs. Yeah, but, but when like you see some good stuff. stuff do. do you know that Egyptians did nose jobs? No way. Egyptians. Yeah, 
because a lot of a lot of Egyptians they would lose their nose. They'd have their nose cut off in fighting. You know, right, okay. Flailing at each other with these big these swords. And they would they would take a leaf uh -huh. and they would use it as a transfer and they would take a piece of skin from the cheek and they would leave it attached by a kind of root and they would flap it over and sew it in place to replace the skin with the nose. Goodness. That's an actual, they, they genuinely did that much. That's amazing. Yeah. Am I learning today? I feel like I'm learning. Right, I'm going to stop that right here because this is not what we're about. Okay, right? Not do this. No, I'm going to talk about the most important thing that's been happening in the last week. Uh, the uh, world has reacted to it in lots of different ways, but the Tiger King. Yeah, well, Tiger King, I know quite a bit about this geezer because he was on a... He was on Louis Theroux a few years ago. Okay. And then there's a really good... If anybody wants a a wee a kind of early taste of the guy. He, there's a podcast about him, Tiger. It's not called Tiger King. Look him up. Okay. But he's fascinating. But the Unbelievable. Fact tigers, the fact he kept tigers is the least interesting thing about Yes, him. that's it. I mean, even in the program, you barely see a tiger. It's the most fascinating thing I've ever seen. But the guy's an absolute piece of shit. He's a piece of shit, and I, it brought out emotions in me that are so new, I don't have a name for them. Yeah, yeah. He, it's madness. He, 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 he was kind of ballsy guy, because he was openly gay. Yeah. And he would, he, he was going into places, he, he was he was a bit of a fearless bastard. But, uh, or you could say enough. psychopath. I think he was psychopath, I think he's, yeah. There's, yeah. He, he wasn't a right. He loses an arm. That uh, I mean, I, I was watching it. I I I done my first ever binge watch because yeah, I couldn't yeah. stop. How many episodes is it? There's seven, I think. Jesus Christ! But is it dealing with other guys? Yes. Like yeah, okay. but they're all interconnected, and the story gets so I can't even, and it's not even a spoiler. I yeah, can't tell you what happens in it. You have to experience it. There's, there's, it's so there's complex. More, there's more. A, there's more tigers in, in private hands in America than there are. That's there. right, there's 10,000 in America and there's 4,000 in the wild. But what they're doing is they're just breeding from brothers and sisters. There's different species of tigers. Yeah, they're it's a mess. It's a complete mess. They, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of like in, inbred tigers with all kinds of issues. They really like white tigers. That's right, they're yeah. They're a real problem, so they're breeding from them. It's fucking monstrous. It's, 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 it's terrible in every way you could imagine. And these people, they're not some anti-heroes. They are no. terrible, awful people. But, oh, well, fascinating. He making his money was like petting zoos and car parks. That's right, yeah. But when the tigers were dying, they, they were... It was horrible, but they were, once the the ones they grew up, they were no good to me. Just they shot them, were, yeah. They shot them, yeah. It's I remember terrible. There was a there was a zoo came to my hometown when there was a little kid, and there's a kind of there's a Polaroid photograph of me somewhere. Whenever I'm, I'm like five years old, and I'm sat on top of this sad looking elephant. But you don't think at the time. No, you don't think. They had tigers in cages. Can they did the tiger, mm -hmm. the guy with the fucking the the, the chair? All that yeah, shit. yeah. And they. I remember because one of my pals from school, he was a vet, and the the the, uh, the one of the tigers gave birth. So they were breeding these tigers in a zoo, yeah, sorry, a circus, mm -hmm. and um, the the tiger gave birth to like stillborn pups, stillborn cubs. Right, right. And the vets had had to do some like autopsy. And these are the local vets that dealt with like coos and uh, collie dogs and stuff. So you can imagine that some of the oh, could I imagine. But zoo they. Zoos, you can kind of understand. Yeah, the, but especially the zoos changed from just curiosity parks yeah, to no, they're yeah. actually, but, you know, trying to maintain an animal. Zoos, zoos often have animals, like they have lions. Now, I'm led to, I don't believe that lions are endangered in the wild at the moment. Right, so okay. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have animals in zoos. That, again, we shouldn't have a breeding. Again, there shouldn't have been these big, they speak about tent pole species that people want to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? They want mm -hmm. to see a lion, they want to see a fucking giraffe. Da, 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 da. But I like, if I, the ones I like in zoos are like the amphibians. Oh, right, okay. You, you like an the, emotional kind of action. action. Yeah, if I was a zookeeper, I'd be looking after newts. Newts. Salamanders. 
salamanders, a trad I'd be looking after the little, the creepy trolleys. Oh, no. You can leave your fucking elephant. Well, see the thing about elephants. I was um, driving, uh, just to let our listeners know, that Glam's Castle is not actually far from here. Right. And I was driving past that area. And I was just a normal country road and hanging over a hedge at the side was an elephant just looking at everyone. And I was like, what the fuck? And it's just there. And I'm like, this is incredible. Huge Indian elephant. But it turns out this was quite a few years ago. And this was one of the last circuses. And every year they would go through this area and they got to put the elephants in these fields. A life, an elephant on the road. It was, it was just, oh. Oh, the, Ken, and I've heard people justify themselves. Oh, we have nice animals. No, you're no, 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 no. You you always you, get, they always get you, caught. You, you, you can't be. You can't be nice to animals in a zoo situation. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. This is terrible. Like Dundee, it's improved a lot, but Dundee, Camperdown Zoo, Camperdown uh -huh. Wildlife Centre, you see some poor looking. There's a golden eagle in a cage. Yeah. They're not looking very happy. It's, it's terrible. Depressing. It is depressing. Animals to, wild animals need to be fucking wild. Mhm. Mm because you know, a tiger's meant to have what four hundred square miles or something. It's oh, like it's, it's oof, phenomenal yeah. distances they've got to live. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. A it's, tiger is just it's just an incredible beast. They're just phenomenal. Terrifying. Tiger, yeah. The most beautiful animal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like a, a, a leopard or a, a, if you see a jaguar, you're like, holy shit. Uh, they are, they're incredible. But watching Tiger King, you will also realise something else. You know these animals are dangerous, but you... I did hear that. What he does is he likes Laura Ashley and me. You know Laura Ashley, the company? Yes. Well, you know how Laura Ashley died? No. She tripped on one of her carpets and fell down the stairs and broke so the cat, the cat periodically sneaks up and he, he gets between my legs. Right. He's honest to fuck, I've always died about six times. <laughs> but I used to go, oh my God, do we think, and I wouldn't stand on him. Yeah. So I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm not going to stand on him, but I'm going to go head first through a window. Yeah. So what I'd do is, I'd just stand on him. He's <laughs> <laughs> fine, but he doesn't learn. No, I'm I sure he doesn't. At, I woke up at six o'clock this morning, woke up. And I the cat woke up as well because he realised I was awake. And then I had to try and convince him I was sleeping. But he was having none of it. And he oh. was just fucking watching me. And it was a very human expression. Like, you're give me. <laughs> Fuck you. You're having me on, you fucker. Give me. Oh, God. They, they... I've got one of those cameras. Can those camera trap things for filming wildlife? Oh, I don't want to know why, but carry on. No, because we've got foxes in the garden, and periodically I put food down and film the foxes. And it's really nice. That's nice. And I guess I'd like to set up and see what the cat does half the time, because I'm sure he comes down and puts a TV on. I'm fucking sure of it. <laughs> Opens a beer. <laughs> Sometimes I can come down and there's a smell of cigar smoke. Like, That's called an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. Do you not smell burnt toast? You can smell cigar smoke as well. This is oh, another no. common one. People say tobacco. Actually, they can even see tobacco in the air. And it's not. It's yeah. an aneurysm. Yeah. So oh, best no. of luck with that. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to prefer to think that the cat's been buying like a cafe trend. <laughs> it's uh, it, uh, I've met your cat and it sounds the most likely explanation to be fair it would, it would make a lot of sense that he's a heavy smoker <laughs> it would explain a lot right here's what's been happening here now because we're all in lockdown mm -hmm. and I am uh, several miles away from my partner and I won't be able to see her for several months so but she must be thriving. She's, you know what? I, I, we went on Facetime the other day, and she's her hair's all dead and her makeup's on. She's wearing a dress. She's looking healthy, and I'm like, what the fuck? Why? Why? What? I'm not there. Why are you looking so good? But she seems to be improving massively. So this is a good thing. And we decided to have a date night. Check this. How about this for romance? Listen, listen to this. So we get our phone, set my phone up, and we've got our Facetime on, so we could see each other and talk. And we'll, we'll have a movie. 
Now, we don't have wine or anything. I don't drink, but we don't have anything like that and we don't have anything special to eat. So what I did have was a cup of tea and a single slice of toast. So, it's getting more romantic by the second, right? So, I sit back in my big comfy chair, which I'm in now, at the window, and I turn my monitor around and we put on a film. Now, this is a film that I know well, but I don't think I've seen in over 25 years. The Lost Boys. Oh, come on, man. That's a wonderful film. It's amazing. It stands up so well. It's the ultimate 80s film. If you said to me, 80s Lost Lost Boys. Boys. The Lost Boys make the 80s look fantastic. It is just beautiful. Did you just fall down the stairs? Yeah, I just (laughs) over a pot plant. Oh, Jesus. The the best bit in it Mm -hmm. is the guy, the oiled guy, Playing the saxophone. It's wonderful. His hip action is. That, I believe that's Tina Turner's saxophonist. That's exactly who he is. That's it, right. That's oh, it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, the, wonderful. It's, just, it's it's very difficult to kind of do. The eighties did a lot of it. It's like a a comedy horror. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Lost Boys is actually quite freaky. There's some amazing bits in it. It's yeah. it's wonderful. The one thing that I appreciated more than anything in it is yeah. you don't see them flying apart from a couple of half second shots. And because the shots, the special effects aren't great, mm-hmm. it's so fast you don't have time to really analyse it. And it just no. it comes across yeah. beautifully. It's so well made. I loved it. Yeah, what's his name is he? Kiefer Sutherland's actually quite cool in it. He's but really he's cool in it. You could say about Kiefer Sutherland. No, that's very true. He's a very dovey, t- he's dovey face. Yeah, but in that, he's fantastic. Oh, it's I David. Now, I like the kind of, the prosthetic stuff when they would go through a vamp spray good. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're proper heads. vampires. They're not glittering. They're proper no, killers. The proper, you know they've got bad breath. Mm-hmm. The a lot of people. When a guy gets spiked, there's just a, this kind of icker. Yes, icker? yes. It comes, it comes fluffing out. It is, oh, oh it's wonderful. Got the, it's got the two Corys in it. Yes. And that, that gives it a bit of poignancy, because like, their lives just didn't turn out. No, right? a life kicked the, them in the, the arse, it really did. so good. The fucking, the mum's so good. He, when, when the evil king villain, the vampire, yeah. transforms, he kind of looks like Gordon Brown. Yeah, he has a... <laughs> He does. He has that look, Tom. Yeah. The, 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 who's the guy? Who's the older brother? Is it Jason Patrick? Jason Patrick. And he's great in it. it, it it's yeah, just... The girls are very attractive. Now, it. hold on. Kinda... Jamie Gertz. Oh. oh. Did you oh. anything else? She was in Crossroads. She was in oh. uh, Twister. And then, I don't know. But, oh, she was in Solar Babies. I'd done a review of that the other night. Solar Babies, a fantastic film. It's not to do with anything solar nor babies. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's... But Jason Parrish has become quite insane now. He's a bit of a kind of father for justice type guy. Oh, no. And I don't think he likes being <laughs> dark <scene. laughs> oh. He never quite made it, though, did he? He never quite... No, he never hit. He's like Michael Beale. They've been in good films, but just never... He just... Made broke out good actors but just not quite just never done it and it's no. I mean ugh, the poor bugger was in um, Speed 2 oh shit in hell and he looks the part in it and he puts all, he's all into it but oh yeah. oh what yeah. a film uh, are you telling me he was out acted by Keanu Reeves he was out acted by a 2x4 Jesus fucking Christ oh. is that the one on the boat I don't think I've yes seen that. now alright okay exactly. I quite like Speed. I, mean, Sandra I think Speed is a wonderful film. She's spunky in it, and Dennis Dennis Hopper is giving it real. Oh, he's he's it. wonderful. I th- you know what? I will give Speed all the credit it deserves. It's a wonderful action film. It's silly. It's fun. Great, but Speed Two is greater in ways that are hard to describe. Willem Dafoe's the villain in that, isn't he? And he's wonderful in it. He's actually wonderful in it. Really good, but I, I I tell I will suggest to everyone if even if you've seen Speed Two, or even not Speed seen Speed Two, we're at a time where we've got plenty of time on our hands. 
watch it again or watch it for the first time and you'll yeah. just have the best time. Um, funnily enough, 80s, you put me in the mood for doing a, a bit of a Die Hard. I might watch Die Hard 1 and 2. I'll give you a little, oh, the Die Hard 2, blah, Die Hard 1, amazing. But oh, no, Die Hard one's brilliant. But I, I have a soft spot for Die Hard too. Really? There's a there's a bit in it where the the villain's just doing like Pilates in front of the telly. But he has no balls. His balls are missing. He's, 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 <laughs> they're all taped up. <laughs> they're all taped up to his body. Yeah, it's it's. But he is an action man. That was the look he was going for. It's it's a an no unusual. Tables. Yeah, he's uh, what's his name? Uh, William Sadler. William Sadler. He was Death in uh, Bill and Ted's oh, yeah, yeah, Bogus yeah, Journey, yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. he's in the new Bill and Ted's as well as Death, oh, but an elderly he, Death. He's in a film. I watched a film the other day. I like a real um, kind of grindhouse B movie. Absolutely. Film. Yep. Love it. Okay, there's one called. I think it's called the the Veterans VMA. Veteran something hospital. It's like a, it's got a William Sadler's in it. Okay. A, it's like a, a bunch of a, a veterans. Are okay. In a, they're in a, they've got a pub, the veteran centre. Mm -hmm. And a, a mad drug gang come in looking for this woman that's hiding out there. And it chainsaws. And oh, it's, wonderful. It's, yeah. It's like, um, kind of like Assault on Precinct 13. Gotcha. Yep, and yep. It's got that. So the gang are like a horde. Then they're coming in the windows. Oh, lovely. Fucking mental. Yeah, faceless lunatics. Death Wish 3 quality. Like, the Death Wish films, I, I find them a bit problematic. I remember kind of quite enjoying them years ago. But, mm -hmm. oh yeah, fucker. There's one where he kills a guy with a, a, a rocket launcher. That's Death Wish 3. It's the it's best one. Wish. It's so strange because it was shot in London and it's meant to be what New York. It? Yes, it was I'd shot. Say Michael Winner, right? <clears throat> yeah, and it's so bizarre. It's like if you're American, a lot of Americans watch it going, "Wait, this what feels is this was I, th it feels right, but it doesn't." There's an awkwardness to it. Where if you're just from here, we go, "That's America," and yeah. it's it's problematic in many ways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's if you watch. Um, uh, uh, World War Z. I'm not going to say Z. Oh, yeah. World War Z. Well, that was filmed in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah, the opening section. The yeah. opening section, yeah. yeah. So you yeah. see all these American cars and that, but if you look carefully, there's oh, lots of Scottish signs and it's it's really strange. Oh, it's an odd oh, thing. People, <laughs> yeah, a lot of ginger zombies yeah. with their cans like, iron brew. Charles Bronson was fucking great in his, in his prime. Oh, he was wonderful in his prime. Yeah, yeah. Rich, wasn't he? Yeah, but he's... He went on too long. He was... He had a really long lasting love affair with Jill Ireland. That's right, that yeah. His wife, and she died tragically. And, no, but the first Death Wish, one of, is it the first one or the second one? One of the rapists is Jeff Goldblum. That's correct. I think that's it's the so first cool. one, actually. I think that is may it? be the first one. I'm, oh, I'm not sure. I'd have to be. I yeah. Don't, I'm not wanting to watch a rape scene in a film. It's. I think uh, if you look at a lot of B movies, as a plot device, as a plot yeah. device, it's very easy to do because it makes yeah. you very motivated. Yes, and it creates a, a, it's a very easy way to create a, a, a revenge story where you can agree with the violence. Yes, well, a common trope is he, Steven Seagal does this a lot. He, they have a wife in it. Yeah. They need a wife so they prove they're not a homosexual. <laughs> this is, the, yeah. wife, the wife has to quickly get bumped off. Yes, that's it. They bump off the wife, and that gives them the impetus to have the revenge, the heterosexual revenge. The heterosexual yeah. revenge, yeah, yeah. The heterosexual revenge, yeah. And and that's so. I think it's like you're saying. It's just a, a an off, often repeated trope, or it's and just a device. A, yeah. That's a shit role for a lassie, right? We'd like you to play the wife. Or is it a meaty role? No, you die in the first five minutes. Oh. oh. But how about yeah, the, the for the rest of the action. Hispanic rape victim in Death Wish Three? Is Troy from um, what do you call it? Uh, Star Trek Next Generation, Marina Citrus, Surtis, oh, Citrus, right yeah, oh. and she's kind of browned up a bit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I was watching her in Picard the other day, uh huh. I quite, like, I quite enjoyed Picard, but she's forgot how to do the voice. <laughs> it's been a long time, she's an elderly woman, it's, it's been so long, she's, she's just doing her London voice, <laughs> yeah. 
I liked all that. I liked her. She, the, the, I didn't like it when they started putting her in the uniform. No? Did you not like no, that? I preferred it when she just had the kind of casual like, gear. Oh, yeah. right. Sort of cat suit. But she, she managed to start the, the, the Starfleet. You could get promotion quite easily. See, here's now I have a problem with the next generation, and here it is. You've got uh-huh. the captain in the middle. You, you, uh-huh. um, Patrick uh-huh. Stewart played that character uh-huh. perfectly. You had faith uh-huh. in him. On the other side, you had number one. And on the other side, a bit more rough, he would spread his legs a lot, man spreading, uh-huh. but in a proper, you know, respectful way. And then on the other side, you had this daft fucking woman who, on the screen, it's going, I will blow your ship out of the sky, I will kill everyone there. And she goes, Captain, I feel there's tension in the air. And I'd be a Troy, shut the fuck up. I don't know how you got here, but I can tell that myself. She never brought anything to the table with her psycho pile, pow, piles, powers. <laughs> Psychic, piles. <laughs> You're about to come under attack. Oh, I got Jesus. Oh, get my cream. She couldn't read minds. She couldn't do it. Exactly. Useless. Her mother knew it. She could do it. Yeah. She was the voice of the computer for all the. We spoke about this. Eh? She was. That was Gene Roddenberry's wife. That's right. Yeah. And she did the voice of the computer throughout. She was actually a wonderful actress. Oh, she's great. She's great. She's she. Any time she appears, any time she appears or Q appears, you realise you're in for some hammy good fun. There was energy, energy in the room. I'm going to be an acting term, yeah. but there was. Yeah. There was energy. There was energy. Was there was energy? A, there was energy. Yeah. But fucking Troy. There was a scene in one of the films, I can't remember which one it was, and it was uh, uh, Jean-Luc Picard, he's, he starts crying because his, yeah. his family have died in a fire or something, oh, yeah. right? Oh, God. Yeah. And and Troy goes, is there something wrong? What, what, what is your fucking job here? Well, I'd Troy like, oh, getting, Jesus. Troy kept getting seduced by these like uh, intergalactic himbos. This They're is true. Various. They always oh, had a good so, flick, though, eh? They they had a good hedo, yeah, they yeah. Come and sedu- Have you ever seen the one? There's the guy who he's a great seducer, and he's like he he, he basically sucks out their juice. Me? So they become <laughs> no, are you kind of like you? So they make, <laughs> he makes these women like age, but they become neurotic, then they become like paranoid, then they become like psychopathic, and then they shrivel and die. Women. <laughs> oh, that's us cancelled. That's it. I've done it. You fucking done it. Listen, I think we. I think episode one we were cancelled. If you you go back and listen to what we did, I think we we're beyond cancelled now. We're uncancellable. Can't happen anymore. All it needs is one person, one of these people. Somebody's listening just now and going, "I'm getting naked and I'm listening right to bring these two fuckers down." Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? The the yeah. advertising would get. Oh, it'd be great. I'm not, does that mean I'm not going to get my free pie sponsorship? You'll get your free pie pon- sponsor. I, oh, Jesus. I'm speaking backwards today. What? In a time of crisis, this is the kind of information we need. They now deliver. They can deliver coffee towers to your house. What? Oh. I started to flag a little bit, then I got that piece of information. I was like, hey, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. There's some poor motherfucker driving around on a moped with a coffee tower in a square box, bringing it to oh, your house. I'm going to be buying one coffee Risking tower. his life. <laughs> well, I was in the garden yesterday. In the garden. In the garden. My headphones in. Right. And uh, I was doing, it was, I was reading. Mm hmm. <laughs> I was oblivious. Listen to a podcast. No our podcast. Can something professional? Absolutely. And, um, <laughs> he, when I turned around, there was a box of vegetables behind me. So the guy that delivers the veg had snuck up. Obviously, <laughs> seen that in my on. No one to say anything because social distancing. Yeah. And just put it down. So I was I was terrified by a cucumber. Not the first time in my life. I'll tell you what. That's yeah. That's a common thing. Uh, have you ever tried putting a cucumber behind your car? No, I would never be as cruel as that, and I hope you haven't either. I tried it, but my car, because of his like inadequacies, he just paid no attention. He just <laughs> didn't bother. <laughs> I put food down to most days, and he'll make a big noise after you've been squeezed. You squeeze out the uh-huh. somebody, 
to eat down. I put the he moans and moans he wants something to eat. I put the food down and he doesn't really see it. Right, okay. So he forgets he's hungry and wanders off. <laughs> That poor animal. Oh, what a wonky thing. He doesn't meow at you for food. He just sits and looks at you. Yes, I'll, that's a catch to that. For fuck, I'll be for fuck's sake, man. I'm not going to get it just now. Just can I have my cup of tea? And then he just looks. Like, Look, I've told you, just stop looking. I'll get it done when I finish my biscuit and that. And I eventually always get up. So you can we? Yeah. He's you... got me. This is what happens, though. Superior this is what. Yes, beings. because we think we're training a cat. There's no way we're training a cat. The cat's training us. Domestic animals, have, yeah, they have. They've trained us to a large degree. They've the they've most, the physically evolved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've physically yeah. evolved to get us working for them. Yeah, Incredible. There's far more dogs in this country than there ever will. Oh yeah, successful. yeah. Very they've very won. The the yeah. well, isn't it the survival survival of the fittest is the the species that's most willing to adapt. They've yeah. adapted. They've so they they've they've won. Yeah. We're shit. Did you ever see see that um, there was a a Russian science experiment, and they had I think it's like foxes that they use for the fur trade. They're like a silver fox, say. Okay, beautiful, okay. lovely coat. Vicious fuckers, can be dangerous. Okay. So the, the the experiment had two sets, two breeding communities of these foxes. The the first fox community, and that was kept wild, so they didn't interact with them. They were kept in an enclosure, the generation generation. The other generation, they'd all started from the same stock. They uh -huh. were cuddled. They were taken out of the cage. They were they were molly coddled. They were stroked. They they have changed physically. Their no way. They've changed. They've become softer. They're bigger eyes. They're more puppy-like. Oh, it's amazing. It's Nature's that's happened quickly. That's happened quickly. Yeah, this is the thing with um, uh, evolution that it mm -hmm. takes a long time. But when the big changes happen, it's almost instantaneous. Yeah. And it's yeah. like when you see how nature even works, so we've been talking about, you may notice around your area, roads are getting a bit dirtier because there's not enough cars. Well, if they're yeah. getting dirtier, that's the earth moving back in and it'll just, it would, it just takes weeks yeah. and it would just eat the place up again. It's amazing. Well, I'm, I'm left to believe is I'm not, you can see it because there's a kind of moth that existed during the kind of industrial revolution. So they became darker because everything was sooty. Oh, and amazing. The world's cleaned up a bit. They're lightening. They don't have to be so dark. That's... Oh, God, isn't life great? Oh, it's... Isn't it's it wonderful? Bit, the adaptive, yeah, the adaptive stuff, it's incredible. It's absolutely bonkers. I wonder where we're going to end up. We talked about this before, but I, I still think we're primer for technology. Yeah. I think we are. Think if you or I... Can, a tough guy from 2020... Mm-hmm. If he, if he stepped in the ring with a tough guy from medieval Britain, they would just tear him apart. Absolutely. People, people will have been fucking mental. Yeah. Absolutely mental. I think so, they yeah. Fuck up, yeah. You know? These big bastard, big barbarians. It's like how people, people go on the, the paleo diet. Because yeah. they say, back, you know, when we were you know, uh, hunting and foraging, we would eat these diets. But when we were hunting and foraging, we were a different human. We were a different, you know, we were physically very different. We were able to yeah. eat different, act different, you know. And so it's, I don't know if it's the healthiest thing. Well, well I've, heard, I've heard say that, like, the hunter-gatherer peoples, mm -hmm. in times of, they, there, was, there was a big population in, in, in the UK, but there was, there was, quite a lot of the space, there's uh -huh. plenty to go around. People were actually quite chilled. And hunter-gatherers, you do your hunting, but you've got a lot of free time. Whereas farming, sustaining yourself through farming, takes an incredible amount of effort. That's Some interesting. Yeah. All the time. Actually, it's less effort to go and shoot a stag. Absolutely, yeah. And ties, I think. Well, of course, possible? yeah. It sounds... You see these guys in the rainforest tribes, and they seem to have quite a kind of idyllic lifestyle in many ways. Mm -hmm. It's kind of quite nice. They're sitting about. The guys go out in the morning. They get their stuff. It's the problem is when the population rises a little bit and there's, there's a nip of food. There's not enough food to go around. 
That's when people become quite beastly. Well, we've seen it with toilet paper. Toilet, well, people, yeah. I think the toilet paper thing's died back, though. I think so. I think I discussed this on the last one that this was expected because yeah. it's a reaction where people, yeah, yeah they, they don't like bugs. I think the shops are kind of, there is plenty of food in the shops. I think yeah. What annoys me, I've seen so much footage of like bin men. Have seen oh, it, like actually, in our street, oh. it was tons of food that was just thrown oh, out. Yeah. yeah, I could see it. The, the bins here. I have my own bin, but my neighbours they have one of the shared bins. There was so much food it was on the outside, and it was yeah. I honest to God, hand my heart, never throw out food. I never waste any food ever. I think if I waste food, um, which I done last week because I got milk and I I had two of them with two different dates and I opened the wrong one first. Ah, well, it was goat's milk. And it was, <laughs> it was lovely. Uh, it's my favourite, but I don't have it now. But you like that smell? You like that taste of goat? Oh yeah. Oh wonderful. I love it. Not the meat though. Oh, I've, I've had goat meat. It's quite nice. Oh, I don't like it. When I was um, no, no. uh, when I did eat meat, I didn't like goat no. meat at all. You didn't. You didn't like goat. No. You you more liked a a suckling pig. Oh bacon. Oh I, oh, oh I God, love it. Say, They've got a festival every year, well, we're going to be having this year, but the berry picking. Okay. And it's all the Polish people that used to come across, not come across now. And at the end of the season, they would have a big festival, and there was music laid on. Oh, nice. Bike. And they, they built these big fire pits, and they had, one was a, they had a pig, and then they had a deer. And uh, oh. the guy, this Polish guy, was stood there with a gigantic knife. And I went, you could go across. It was all a kind of, you, you, kept, you, you chipped in some money, but it wasn't an uh-huh. official thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you'd go across and he'd, he'd say, can I get a piece? And he'd just hand you the knife. <sighs> and you could just cut a piece off yourself. But he'd, he'd stabbed the deer hide and put cloves of garlic. Oh, but, oh my man. word. Oh. It was extraordinary. Can we, but we've been doing a thing where you, you just eat less meat. Uh huh. Better quality meat. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, makes yeah, but sense. Think of the shit I've eaten in my life. Can all the cheap frozen burgers? Yeah, no. Nah. Hot beans and hot beans and sausages. In the I think the only when I was eating meat, the only stuff it did have anyway was uh, like chicken or some bacon. I never went beyond that because red no. meat would make me sick as a dog. No, yeah. I mean, it smells great, but as soon as I put, oh, I could feel myself throwing up. Like I, it I'm was just a not good. <laughs> oh, I know. I showed, I showed Badger. I showed up to my work one day with a pheasant in my jacket pocket. Oh. And they, a, a side side. The guy was working with me was, what the fuck are you doing? I was plucking this pheasant. And then I cut the feet off and just sat them there. Yep. I freak him out. <laughs> that would be fine, though. That would be absolutely oh, fine, you know. Shouldn't have waste stuff. Shouldn't have waste anything at all. It was pals of mine who... They were all vegan. They were some very self-sufficient. They live in a kind of place up north and a little wind farm and they do everything. But then, because of the scented candles, the, <laughs> the place burnt to the ground. <laughs> nobody was helped. But they lost everything. Everything. And being hippies, they had no insurance. Of course. But their attitude is now, fuck it, we can't, they, they, so they'll eat meat. Basically, whatever they can, if they can find it, they'll eat it. Mm, fair that. enough, yeah. They don't have the thing called... They kind of be so particular. Mm-hmm. So, but they don't, they do eat road, roadkill if they get a chance of some cheap stuff. Eat it. Can they? That's what there was a guy on YouTube that would eat raw roadkill. He would just oh, no, rip it apart, or rip it apart the side of the road and eat it. How about that? Mm-hmm. I'm going to die quick yeah, that way. Yeah, the, how, as far as veganism goes, is it not going to be a bit tricky to get stuff at this time? Uh, actually, it's the choice has been phenomenal because even in an emergency, nobody wants vegetarian food. And the, the, the last time I was out of the house, like three three weeks ago yesterday, I've been in. So, yeah, nine weeks to go. So uh, I went to Tesco's, do my shopping, there was, the shelves were empty. And I went, oh no, what am I going to do? And I turned the corner into the vegetarian section. This, <laughs> it was overflowing. <laughs> I 
much. Oh, I love them. I love no, them. No, there's some. No. Th- there are some that are not so good. But see now, in general, vegetarian food. Uh, Tesco's have come out with a new range of Plant Chef. It's called fucking Plant great, Chef. fucking brilliant. I love it. Really good. Yeah. But, but I'm led to believe, have I said this before, but somebody bought a Linda McCartney shepherd's pie once and it was full of bones because a, a, a blackbird had fallen into the cooking process. Mm. And now the rafters of the front. This will happen. <laughs> <laughs> and that person, <laughs> and that person was the only one that got vitamins that day. <laughs> uh, no, I feel, I feel good. I'm like, strong. I I was a vegetarian before. Uh, for quite a while and uh, I had an illness and I, and I just wasn't a, a re- regaining weight or strength or anything so I thought I need to knock this on the head and get myself better and I got some chicken and I started shaking when I was eating it the body was like uh, yeah I was shaking and I couldn't I'm stop it was amazing there was, a lot, there, was a, there was a few elite sports people and they tried to go fully plant based Yeah, but I, I think they've kind of if I was still it. surfing every day and I was still doing all these sorts of things, I don't know if I could maintain it because the the sort of the proteins you need and you eat up when you're really exercising or expending right. a lot of energy, I don't think I could replace it. But I don't live like that now, so I think I'm okay and you're, my, my you're, vitamins and that. But are you saying that vegetarianism is better for laziness? Absolutely. See, at this time of social distancing and staying in the house, there'll be a lot of vegetarians. One of the most terrifying things I ever saw on the telly was chimpanzees hunting monkeys. <gasps> Isn't that? I've seen it. And they, oh God, they are killers. When they start eating the meat, they get, they, it's insane how much they enjoy it. Well, it's I. It's like their faces, their eyes. Their yeah, eyes, they're, they're, it's. Oh, yeah. I was. They don't do it a lot, so they don't, eat, they don't require meat a lot. They'll kill, like, the young and eat them and everything, their yeah. own kind in them, but check I've this. I've told you this before that sheep will often eat chicks and nests. Yes. Yeah. Because they need, they've got, if they're on islands, they've got a, a, a lack of some vitamin. So they started eating the eggshells from nests. And then they started eating the actual. Text. It's just, it's just nature. Your, your body will tell you. You'll get a craving, well, and that's I don't it. Think I'd like to see a sheep eating a chick. It's a bit. That's a bit scary, isn't it? Isn't it? It's a bit awful. Now the <laughs> the chimps, they there was someone was saying they'll go into the Stone Age for sure if they start cooking food. And some chimps have been seen to take uh, their food and place it on rocks so it heats up. I suppose the cooking process will release more energy from it, doesn't it? This is it. It's doing something that they're getting from it. And they're putting on rocks and it comes off at red hot and they can eat it then. Have you seen the orangutan that started washing its hands? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because it's been watching people. They say they're the smartest ones, the orangutans. I've seen one that's like rowing a boat. Oh, incredible. It's like... uh, There's one that figured out a lock and was able to open and shut a door. Oh, the, it's incredible. I think in New Zealand, all the great apes have human rights, which is wonderful. Oh, they should, well, they should have. They should, what's I mean... Which still is a kind of parrots in New Zealand are incredibly intelligent things. They're just, they're mental. You know, they spend most of their time playing. It's just crazy. Oh, crazy kind of great, yeah. great. Yeah. I don't know if I'd have a parrot in the house. No, it's, uh, I think, oh God, it's, it's, it's a lot, isn't it? Exhausting, wouldn't it? It's, they're a lot. They're demanding. They're another person. Yeah. yeah, another person in the house. That's what it is. And you've, the, you know. a superior person, because they can fly. Oh, God, they're, they're smart. Have you ever seen How of the Duck? I have. If and God had meant us to fly, he wouldn't have taken away our wings. Hmm, well... <laughs> I might watch Howard. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm going to watch I'm it as well. Fancying a bit of 80s. I'm fancying a well, getting series. back to my date night. My next date oh. night, listen to this Lethal oh, yeah, Weapon. No, this. no, no, I we're know. going to have one, but the film's I'm Lethal Weapon. Oh. Lethal Weapon 1, not, not 2. He's got the full mullet to oh, that. wonderful. I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to I'm age well. For this shit. Yeah, and then, oh, do you know? All the original cast are making a new Lethal Weapon. Oh dear! They're in their eighties. I, I like I like Danny Glover. I love Predator Two. 
Predator 2 is a great film. Oh, Danny Glover's, he fucking kicks ass in that. Film. That's a good film, he's yeah. He's a big son of a bitch. He's, yeah, that. he's good. Him, the one yeah. film that he's a, a bit of an issue with is in Shooter, where he's a bad guy, but he's just had his oh, dentures. Yeah. So I can't, so I can't get over it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very hard to understand yeah. him. Yeah, no, it's not the best. No, he's good. Yeah, I think that Mel Gibson's fucking mental. He's oh, he's a crazy person. He's insane. And I find it slightly difficult to watch. <laughs> I do like the Mad Max films, though. I'll give him that. Mad Max, Mad Max is Max great. Mad Max is such a good film. Such a good film. It's wonderful. Yeah. One. Have you ever watched? post-apocalyptic films. I think it's called the G, something the Jager, Salute the Jager. It's like um, Rutger Hauer. Uh-huh. And there are guys playing a kind of sport. It's like fucking, it's like Gladiator's a TV show but in the apocalypse. Oh, this sounds like wonderful. Sticks, and they're going about the wasteland and then they end up in the main city. Oh. And it's like the biggest sport. Salute the Jager. Look it up, Jagger, Jager. It's oh, a wonderful film. this sounds a great. Wonderful film. I'm yeah. loving eighties films at the moment. This is what me and my partner are all about at the moment. Not because we're being nostalgic. It's like, well, here's here's where it went wrong. Uh, a little while ago, we watched Gremlins. It's oh. terrible. You don't like Gremlins? It hasn't aged. It just doesn't work. You don't think so? No, we both were watching it. And I went, this is not the way I remember. And she's going, no, this isn't that good. And we both kind of had the same reaction going, God, that hasn't aged well. It just doesn't seem to work. The editing's a bit clunky in it. And I don't remember that. Phoebe Cats? Phoebe Cats? Cats? I can't remember. Yeah. But, oh, no, it doesn't work. My favourite uh, movie couple of all times in that. The, fu- the Futtermans. The Futtermans? <laughs> 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 oh yeah. Another guy I fucking love, an eighties actor. Is he called? Is he not called? Uh, uh, James Tolkien. James he's Tolkien. A bald, he's a bald-headed uh, uh, headmaster in like Back to the Future. Oh right, yeah, got you. James Tolkien. He's in fucking He-Man. He-Man. He plays character. the same character as the co- Yeah, he's just. The... I'm not. God, I'm, not, I'm not saying James Tolkien's got a wide range. <laughs> he's, fucking wonderful. he's wonderful. He's yeah. Wonderful. Just He's wonderful. great. Just these guys, but no, the, the Futtermans, Marty Futterman. The Futterman. I, I think he's maybe died very recently. He died Futterman. very recently, I believe, yeah. and he oh, he was so in Terminator. Good. Everyone forgets yeah. that he was in the Terminator. Yeah. Was, was he the, what did he do, the Terminator? Was he the gun shop? He guy? was the gun shop owner that got oh, shot, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Terminator film was good. Though. That was great. The, he was good about those films. And you fa- the, the, Films one or two long in the 80s, and they fucking have a momentum, and they just fucking go. Pace, that's it. They set up, and there's no fucking bullshit set up. They just, you're thrown into it, wallop. I'll They're give you a story. Now. They're forgotten. I, I, I agree. Things are three-hour films. I don't want it. Yeah, but I got up one morning, uh-huh. and I, I saw in the news that tanks uh-huh. had rolled into... Uh, Moscow, there's a revolution, there's all this going on, you know, and something's happening. And that afternoon, I went to see Terminator 2 and went, Oh, there's the end of the world. And by the time I come out, the headlines were, Are we heading towards nuclear war? And I was convinced, I was, I was almost a way to dig a hole. Oh my god, yeah, 91. Uh, that's it, that's it. Oh, it's it, and it was it's just stop motion stuff. The kind of oh, that's wonderful! Yeah, I love it when he comes out of the I fire. Like I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. I do. You know what to watch if you want to realise how charming and why everyone likes Schwarzenegger when they were working on a film with him. Uh, look at the making of Commando or behind the scenes of Commando, oh, and he's yeah. just God. He's just the king. He's castle. Everyone loves him, and he's just yeah. He's, he's a, charming he's as anything. Yeah, big son of a bitch. yeah. He's very he's charming. He gets on with everyone. He's a bit he's a bit tactile at one point. <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. The, the thing I liked about him was he had the son and he just held his hands up and he's like, I mean, yeah, oh. fair enough. He's recently done a thing, I think he donated like a million pounds worth of PPE stuff to to the med the medical centres in America. Oh that's good. He's a he yeah. With, he lived with a tiny horse and a tiny donkey. Like, it can't, you're living the life at that. He's fucking living the life. I say that, it is quite easy 
to self-isolate when you've got a gigantic swimming pool in your back. That's true. I think a lot of the people who are multi, multi, multi-millionaires in their massive mansions going, oh, it's so difficult. It's like, shh. But the thing is, they can, you kind of go down the route of going, just because they've got money, they need to be destroyed. That's kind of kind of uh, No, I, uh, but... But they could get... Uh, to me, the only if I if I had vast amounts of money, the best thing about having vast amounts of money is you could spend the money and help people. That's right, you know, absolutely. You could make some difference. Yeah. George Michael seemingly was the most generous man ever lived, and he was seemingly in a rest. He used to just go about by himself, quite a shy guy, mm-hmm. and he was in the restaurant, and he'd heard there was a couple sat next to him, and the, the lassie was upset because she was in financial difficulty, and say she was behind she was behind in her rent or something like that. Mm-hmm. So he discreetly went up to the shop person and said, could you make sure this woman gets it? And he paid all her bill. He'd he, he, he thrown her some money. See, that's money. lovely. It would be now, great to nah, do that, yeah. You know, all, these, all these wealthy people are getting morose, so I'm so fucking jaded with life. Yeah. Do something nice. Because isn't that the, the main thing that helps you in life? If you actually help others, that'll improve I'm, your I'm life. It's the one I'm thing, yeah. I'm not a believer in karma. No, but, but it does help, yeah. The one story that's angered me a little bit is can David fucking get it? Oh, yes, I know where you're going. He, he is self isolating on his billionaire, David Geffen, self isolating on this luxury yacht. Yes. Now that should be, that should be nuked. <laughs> Just a torpedo. A torpedo. Oh, could, I could I could see you as a sort of dust boat captain. Fuck him, please. Can these boats? These boats have got desalination plants on them. These giants. Incredible, eh? Yeah. They can they can just stay at sea forever. Oh, God! I'm, it's kind of sounding attractive to me now. Well, I was in Barcelona years ago, and it was a uh, Abramovich. Okay. You know, a Russian guy. Yeah. His, his super yacht was parked there. And on the back of his giant super yacht was a yacht that is a giant super yacht itself. Oh, it was incredible. Crazy. Actually, was crazy. years ago, I was in um, uh, Stornoway for a bit, and this uh, cruise ship came up, and I thought it was a cruise ship. It's not a cruise ship. It's this ship called the Earth or the World, or I can't remember, but all the, everyone that has a, a cabin on it are millionaires. Do you know the one? Just travels the world. And and it's all like a tax haven and all this sort of stuff. But there's people that live on it. And they are the, the super duper elite. And this, this boat just travels. Do you know what's coming out of this situation we're in just now? What's that? The cruise industry is fucked. Ah, it's done. It's done. It's utterly done. The notion of just like moving people. No, it's it's not. That's hard. How are they get a re? How are they get to reject that industry? God they knows. Sign up for a cruise next year. With six thousand people on these giant ships, where everyone's no, going to be going. No. <coughs> <It's fucking laughs> oh no. No, that's, that's, that's a done. But the thing is, I watched that documentary about it. These big yacht, big uh, uh, liners show up at places, mm-hmm. and they're so polluting. Unbelievably, yeah, they're you know, just a moving city, them, yeah. And they destroy the docks of the places they visit, and then the thing is, the the they don't the money doesn't go into the town. That's These right, yeah. Don't go and, Dundee had a few cruise liners rocking up, and they thought that's us. Yeah, we've got it. Every shop in the town is getting benefit. There's always some fucker, kind of like the the mayor for Jaws going, guys. Yeah, guys. yeah, that's it. Nobody. The, they spent next to nothing. Because they go to the, all the free places, like uh, to see a site or a museum. Yeah, that's they it. Don't spend yeah. Any money at all. I mean, um, money's a funny one. So. Oh, it's it's a it's a difficult, yeah. difficult, I mean, difficult one. Yeah. yeah. It's like Sky. I don't know when the last time you were in Sky. Sky's a lovely place. Lovely, it's beautiful. Became a hot spot for tourists. It's fucked. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Fall, fall of human beings. Just wait. Oh, going to visit a thing spoils a thing. It's a bit of a shame. I mean, yeah, that's it's a problem now. Any lovely little secret place you discover, people fucking go online and tell people about it. And spoil that's it. it. That's why I have you several know, secret know. places I go to, and that's it's what they are. Secret, secret place. place. No, they're lovely. They're lovely. A little, you know, in Crocodile Dundee too. Yeah. You know, he's shark. Mm-hmm. Have you got something along those lines? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, th- 
I bet you've got a tree house just stacked full of jazz mats. It's, it's, you know, I have a little place and it's so in the middle, in, right? And it's stacked up with basic survival equipment, not for like the apocalypse. It's if anyone's hiking or anything, there's, uh-huh. you know, and you're stuck, there's it is a place. But yeah, uh-huh. it's it's pretty cool. Uh-huh. It's like a bothy, you talk about. It's kind of a bothy, kind of. Uh-huh. But very <laughs> secret. <laughs> This pals of mine, uh, he is a teacher and he does a lot of this kind of Duke of Edinburgh thing. Uh-huh. And they were at some bothy and there was a number of kids and they all stayed in the bothy at night and the weather got really quite bad and they were all conquered down and it was older kids so they could have like, they, they got a wee glass of wine and yeah. I mean, they're all sixth formers and the fire and all and everything's good and the door burst open and the creepiest man alive <laughs> walks out of the storm <laughs> and <laughs> to them. Oh. And just sits in the corner in his sleeping bag. Oh, Jesus. You know, eating an apple. And they're like, what? And the whole atmosphere just disappeared. Yeah. You know what I mean? And ruined everything. It oh. could have been you. It could have been. It could have been. I do like an apple. <laughs> you, could, you could empty a party quick enough, could you? Oh, I've, and I have done. And on that note, it's we're, we're six minutes over. They're getting their money's worth. They're getting their money's worth. And you know what? It, I think a few extra minutes at a time like you this. Them. I don't them. A little. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, can, we can claw it back next time. We'll do it. We'll just give a really meager... Uh, I mean, we'll you know we are well to, over 4,000 hours now listened to of this yeah, show. So I want to thank everyone that's, that's listening. I really appreciate right. it that you put up with... It's wonderful. Go on. Going on a journey with us? No, no. <laughs> they're they're taking step backs in life after uh, listening to this. They're they're not going anywhere. No, it's we're like, ruining you things. We walk over the hot coals, and as long as you keep moving quite fast, your feet don't get burnt. This is what I think. And I know what we are. This th- th- that's it. We are the hot coals. But because it's it's the only reason you don't get burnt is basic physics. That's why the hot coals have to be a certain length. If you make them any longer, you get burnt. We're seven minutes over. You're getting burnt right now. You're getting burnt. You're feeling it sizzling. You're feeling it's getting a bit toasty. Oh, uh, and an ember between the toes. This is what's happening now. Go and dip your feet in an ice bucket. <laughs> Listen, everyone, I really appreciate you turning up and listening to us because we'll have no friends. <laughs> Anally. Oh, yeah, in my eye. That, in my eye. Cheers, dudes. Laters.